Visions are a key part of Genshin's lore and world building, but how somebody receives a vision will change from person to person. After reading 79 character stories and reading through thousands and thousands of words, here's a good enough explanation of how each character got their vision. Before we get started, there are spoilers ahead. Shut it, Paimon. It's not really clear how Albedo got his vision. It just showed up, but he just wasn't that surprised, and he was excited that he got to use it for alchemy. Alhatham was on a research trip and he was reading a book about languages and when he finished the book, a vision appeared. Amber's grandfather used to be the outrider for Mondstadt, but he left without an explanation. Amber became an outrider to see if she could understand why her grandfather had left Mondstadt, but she didn't find an answer. After reading the Wind, Courage, and Wings book, Amber decided to find her own purpose in life, and that's when her vision manifested. <sighs> Ito woke up one day and it was under his hip. He then bragged about it to anybody that would listen until they were sick of it. That's his story. Okay, look, Baiju's story is actually really good. A plague struck his home and it left him orphaned, so he became a physician's apprentice, but his master died young because Cheng Sheng, the White Snake's contract. In exchange for healing abilities, the contract D has a shortened lifespan. If Cheng Sheng does not have a host, she dies. So Baiju decides to take on a contract to save her. His goal is to find immortality so that nobody dies from sickness or this contract and this resolve is what grants a vision. Barbara was taking care of a young boy who had an intense fever, so she sang him a lullaby until the boy got some rest. The next morning the boy's fever was gone and she had a vision next to her hand. She can heal the sick through song like a Disney princess, no contract required. Beidou and her crew battled Haishan, a sea monster so mighty that it can make waves that were dozens of meters tall. For four days, Beidou and her crew fought this beast without sleep, watching and waiting for the opportunity to slay the beast. At dawn, Beidou saw her chance and defeat Haishan in one strike. For besting the sea monster, she was rewarded with a vision. That is honestly too much work. She should have just slept. Is she stupid? While on an adventure, Bennett was heavily injured and was losing a lot of blood. But because he's got the power of shonen anime on his side, he kept going. Eventually, he passed out from his wounds, but when he woke up, his wounds were cauterized and he was no longer in pain. And in his hand was the warmth of a vision. Aru village was starting to change. There were more young people that wanted to live outside of it. The elders blamed Candace for allowing Aru village to change so much. But Candace stood her ground and refused to let the town stay in the past and swore to protect its future. Charlotte was investigating the mistreatment of salvage divers and went to personally investigate. She went missing for days, but came back with concrete photographic evidence and exposed the person responsible. So Chevres and her vice captain were on a mission when they were suddenly ambushed and the vice captain died. Chevres had a clear shot on the criminal, but instead of taking revenge, she arrested him and let the courts deal justice. Due to Chongyun's abundance of yang energy, his presence is enough to ward off spirits, but people feel like he's a fraud because he didn't perform specific rituals like other exorcists. Instead of giving up or putting on an act, he wanted to be the greatest exorcist in his own way. This resolve is what gave him a vision. A young girl got lost and Kale rushed into the forest to find her. After fighting against multiple beasts and some childhood trauma, Kale saved the young girl and was given a vision. Sino is actually the descendant of King Deshret. Psych! He's a scholar and he read a book. Dia's vision first manifested when she decided to become a mercenary. Dia actually considered selling her vision because she felt that if she was at <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dia felt that if she was truly favored by the gods, that they would just send her Mora. While Dia likes her vision, she refuses to bend to the will of the gods. Diluc's father, Crepus, regretted never earning a vision. It doesn't say how Diluc got his vision, but he uses his vision in honor of his father's will to protect Mondstadt and to make his father proud. Diona's father went hunting in a storm, but did not return. Diona braved the weather, saved her father, and for the first time, purposefully made a good drink for him. Dory's older sister is sick and bedridden, but she keeps a brave face for Dory. The herbs needed to treat her illness cost millions of Mora. Dory is determined to work for her entire life and to make Mora so that her family doesn't have to suffer. This is a genuinely heartbreaking story and it is crazy that she's only used as a Joe character in the game. Eula struggled with the history of her clan and after being mentored by an outrider, she found her own path that is strong but also kind. Farazan escaped the ruins that she was trapped in, then the winds guided her to safety and gave her a vision. Imagination! Fremenet and some of the other children from the House of the Hearth went on an underwater mission, but Fremenet noticed that their diving equipment was malfunctioning. As he was drowning, Fremenet didn't give up and saved his family. Brina gave the best damn performance of her life. After she got her vision, she went to fight a local legend, but lost, and then she accidentally flooded her house. While Gaming was escorting a caravan, a group of bandits attacked. Even though he was outnumbered 10 to 1, he beat them all and none of the goods that he was protecting were taken. Instead, a vision had appeared. Ganyu helped Morax during the Archon Wars, and after the war, stayed in Liwei to help the people build their own society. 
Her duty is to act as a bridge between the Adepti and the humans. Goro earned his vision when he realized that instead of making himself a stronger archer, the best way to win a battle was through teamwork and coordination, so he focused on helping his allies improve. Hu Tao went to Wong Hill, which is the border between the living and the dead, to look for her recently deceased grandfather. After staying there for three days, she came to the realization that her father was not here because he lived a good and honest life, so his spirit had already moved on. When she returned home, a vision was in her bag. After Jean was promoted to captain, she defended against diplomatic pressure from the Fatui and stopped attacks from the Abyss Order. Her vision is a reminder of her duty to protect Mondstadt. While resting one night, Kazuo was reflecting on his journeys and how he felt a sense of freedom and wonder traveling the world. Kazuo had made peace with his life as a wanderer and received a vision. Kaya was the adopted son of Krepus, but he was also a spy for Conria so he wasn't sure who he would side with if a war broke out. After the death of his adopted father, Kaya told Yilik the truth, and they fought, which is when Kaya's vision appeared. Practice Ayaka practiced her sword technique until she could defeat her opponent with a single strike, which is also when she received her vision. When Ayato's father died, he became the leader of the Kamisato clan. Initially, he was overwhelmed by all of his new responsibility, but he focused on what was important, which was to protect his family and its future. This conviction is what manifested a vision. Dory commissioned Kaveh to build her mansion and promised that he would have full creative license to do whatever he wanted. The only thing she wanted was for the mansion to be grand and extravagant. The first version of the mansion was destroyed by the Withering, so Dory wanted to cut her losses, but Kaveh wanted to finish the project, not because of Mora, but because of his own personal principles. He went as far as to sell his child childhood home and went into debt to finish it. Before he said goodbye to his childhood home, he went there and made a dish that he used to make with his late father, which is when he received his vision. It's not entirely clear how Kaching got her vision, but she hated it because others would attribute her success to her having a vision instead of her own hard work. So she tried to destroy it. She tried burning it, running it over with a minecart, and even throwing it from the jade chamber. Eventually she came to appreciate her vision because the power of the vision doesn't matter. What matters is the person and wielding the vision. Kirara used to look like a regular cat with one tail. One winter night, the old woman who took care of her didn't come home, so Kirara got worried and went to look for her. It was too dark to see, so she climbed up a tall tree and saw the lights from the city, which inspired her. She found her granny and escorted her back home in her new yokai form. Kali exploded her workshop. What did you expect? Kujo Sara already had a vision as a child. The forest that she lived in was destroyed by monsters and she fell from a great height but survived. The head of the Kujo clan at the time, Kujo Takayuki, saw her vision and believed that she was a gift from the heavens, so he trained her to be a great warrior. Sara believes that everything good that happened to her was because of the Archon's favor, so she decided that her purpose would be to fight for the Shogun. Shinobu didn't want to become a shrine maiden, so she ran away from home, which which is when she got her vision. To her and her sister Miyuki, this was a sign that Kuki was making the right decision. Layla got into a debate with her professor that went back and forth for half of a year and won so hard that he admitted that he was wrong. <sighs> One day, Lisa wished that she had a vision so she could further her study of magic, and poof, one appeared in her hands. What the f- <laughs> Some of the Hoyvers checked out early that day, for sure. Linny and Lynette went on a mission to get some evidence, but the only way for them to escape was by jumping off a cliff and into a river. Linny protected his sister from the impact, but fell unconscious. Fortunately, Lynette grabbed some driftwood and they made it onto shore, but they weren't safe yet because guard and mechs were patrolling nearby. She successfully avoided the guards back to safety to their father. Lynette received her vision before Linny, which meant that Lynette was going on more missions without her brother. Linny knew that if he wanted to help Lynette, he had to get stronger, so he asked his father for a delusion, but was quickly and harshly shut down. Lynette's cover got blown and the twins had to escape off a cliff just like before, except this time Linny had a paraglider and the two jumped jumped off the cliff, but gunfire shot holes into the glider and the two fell. That's when Linny was given a pyrovision which propelled them into a river. Mika was on a mission to survey some ruins, but he accidentally alerted two abyss mages. The fire mages attacked him, but he was saved when an icy mist burst into the ruin. Mika escaped and gave his intel to the reconnaissance company. Mona was given a vision by her teacher as a teaching aid. To Mona, the vision is a reminder of their time together, and she wore it just as a normal accessory 
until her own vision manifested within that teaching aid. Nahira is a archon, so she doesn't really have a vision story. Her gnosis story is that she decided to trade her gnosis in exchange for knowledge and the elimination of the Tori segments. On Navia's birthday, she played a game of D&D &D with Silver, Malus, Sunny, Clorind, and her father Callus was the game master. By the end of the quest, a vision appeared in the dice box. Do you know how difficult it is to get your friends together to play a game of D&D IRL and finish a quest? That shit's impossible. She earned that vision. Nuvalet continues to give out visions, but in interesting details that he doesn't know who's receiving a vision. Nilu gave the best damn dance performance of her life and she found the purpose of dance. Ningwong found a masterless vision and planned on auctioning it to the highest bidder, but as she was writing her business plan, it resonated with her. All of her attends were happy for her, but Ningguang was pissed because she couldn't sell it anymore. Noelle failed her selection test to be a knight for the seventh time, but Jean and the Archons recognized her hard work. Her vision is a reminder to not give up her dream to be a knight. Chi Chi's vision was gifted to her right before she died. Chi Chi wanted to freeze time because she didn't want to die and live a happy life with her family. What the <laughs> fuck? Bryden needed to store her noses because she no longer felt like she needed it. So she gave it to Yai Miko to hold on to it because she knew Yai wouldn't trade it for anything unless it was something very important. One day, Razor's wolf pack was hurt by an abyss mage and his need for revenge caused an abundance of electric energy to be released and manifested a vision. When Rosaria was young, she was part of a bandit gang and they had no food so she ran away. One of the elders brought her back and challenged her to combat for trying to leave the gang, killed him and earned a vision. It's not really clear how Kokomi got her vision or if she just always had one, but her story is about her will to protect Watatsumi Island and its people. Sai went on a mission gathering intel and barely escaped alive. After gaining a vision, she could wield a claymore taller than her. Jenna's dad tried to sacrifice her to a monster when she was a child, but instead of dying, she fought that monster for days. Finally, she slayed the beast when she received a vision. Haizo had a childhood friend, but they grew apart after the friend confessed to being a thief. Years later, Haizo and his friend tried to reunite with each other, but the friend was tragically killed by a thief. Since then, Haizo had the resolve to combat the sins of the world. Sucrose was conducting her 159th dandelion simmering experiment when the room filled with steam and a vision was in the cauldron. Tartaglia doesn't have a vision story, instead he has a delusion story. Child was gifted a delusion in front of the Saritza and the Jester for his service in battle. He also has a deep respect and admiration for the Saritza because he sees her as a true warrior and took a vow of loyalty. Toma used to be from Mondstadt but traveled to Inazuma where he met the Kamisato clan. They helped him out and he swore to assist Ayato and Ayaka, which granted him a vision. Tignari went to an academic conference and noticed that the lecturer was teaching false information. When Tignari corrected him, other students and teachers added to the discussion and it led to a deeper understanding of the topic. After the conference, a vision was on Tignari's chair. The Traveler has some basic lore about vision. Celestia is the realm of the gods, and if a person from Tevet has a strong ambition, Celestia may notice and grant that person a vision. This ranges from slain bees to reading a book apparently. The Traveler cannot have a vision because they are alien to Tevet. Venti's story explains that Archons don't need visions, but Venti wears a fake vision which can turn into the liar that he uses. The Wanderer faced his own personal demons and learned to accept his past so he can move on to a better future. Grizzly got his vision on the first day of prison. He successfully hid it from the other inmates for years. When he became the Duke of Meropede, he stopped hiding his vision. Zhang Ling earned her vision when she embodied her belief that she can make a delicious dish even with the most horrifying ingredients. Shen Yun does not need a vision to wield the elements, but she chooses to wear one while she's in human form. One day, she saw that a farmer was being threatened by some bandits and went to help. The farmer tried to stop her until he noticed that she had a vision. The two of them drove the bandits away. The farmer had wished that he had a vision, but Shen Yun told him that he didn't need one because he defeated the bandits with his own skill and courage. Adepti earned their visions differently from humans. Since Zhao is an Adepti, he already had a vision, and he doesn't really know how he got it. But every Lantern Rite, he defends Liu from monsters for the entire day without stop. Xing Chou is the successor of the Guha clan, and he wrote a verse explaining that a martial arts vision is an extension of the self and that the weapon is an extension of the vision. The verse was so beautiful that the clan head was moved to tears and the writing was sealed away. While Sing Cho's words were beautiful, his handwriting was atrocious, which was the real reason it was sealed away. Xin Yan felt like her and her music did not fit in in Liwei, but instead of leaving the country to somewhere that appreciated rock and roll, she would go to the top of Mount Tenhung and practice. She experimented with fire and enhanced her act that would give her a vision. In true Miko fashion, she doesn't really tell us how she got her vision. 
Maybe she got it from a heated battle, or maybe she got it from a ramen duel. It might not even be a real vision. Yonfei has a contract with her parents that she would live happily, which means she finds legal loopholes in Liwei's system and uses that for her benefit, but she doesn't go too far. Her vision is the embodiment of the belief that one should live as one pleases without overstepping. Yayo actually doesn't know how she got her vision, but she wants to follow Madame Ping's example to care for and protect all people. Yelon used to work with a team to investigate the abyss, but one mission, her tactics failed and her teammates perished one by one until it was just Yelon all alone. Since then, Yelon would practice for days until her fingers bled. Now armed with a vision, all missions taken by Yelon are done solo. For Yoimiya, fireworks are a form of eternity because the memories and feelings created from seeing fireworks can remain in people's hearts forever. One night, while Yoimiya was improving her craft, she was given a vision. She initially used this vision as a lighter. Early in Yunjin's debut, she excelled as a performer, but she would eventually grow bored of the role she played. Each performance blended together and Yunjin was no longer satisfied. It wasn't until the opera Snow Treading that she felt fulfilled. Yunjin wanted to perform stories that were sincere. This epiphany gave her a vision. Zhongli made a contract with the Cryo Archon. Giving up his divine powers is a great price to pay. We don't know what the Cryo Archon's end of the bargain is, but it foreshadows that she's going to have to sacrifice something even greater. I guess the main takeaway from all these vision stories is to stay in school. Who knows, if you finish your thesis, maybe you'll get a vision.